Hey, I'm Alec with Matter Hackers, and today I'm going to tell you how to succeed with PVA, the solvable support material. Elmer's glue sticks are made of PVA, so essentially, PVA support material is just solid glue stick, which means any of your PLA prints are going to stick to the support material super smoothly, and at the very end, you're going to have a very smooth finish underneath your parts. Now, when might you want to use dissolvable support material? Well, when you have complex objects like this fallout power armor, or these engine blocks, or this tubular helix, any of those are going to be really complex to tear apart when you make your support material out of the same material. In the case of this fallout power armor, if this was printed with support material out of PLA, just like this was, it would be stuck in all the crevices and be nearly impossible to tear apart, or in the process of tearing it out, you're going to remove details. But with PVA, you put it in a bucket for an hour, maybe two, and then you come out with this beautiful figure. In some cases, there are even models that are impossible to break support material out of, which means you need to use PVA material, like the Helix. Its internal cavity means that it's impossible for you to reach in there and pry it out with pliers or grab at it with tweezers if it was also printed in PLA. But because I printed it with PVA, I can roll a ball through it and it will go through from one end to the other without a hitch. Now, when might you want to use another support material besides PVA support material? In the case of ABS, HIPS is your go-to. They have a very similar printing temperature, which means they're not going to warp each other. For things like TPE, TPU, you can try PVA and it'll go pretty well, but they do have a difference in printing temperature, so your experience may vary. With nylon, you'd really want to avoid PVA and maybe even just use the nylon for your support structure because PVA needs water to dissolve, but nylon absorbs water into the model. So your model is going to kind of crumble as you use PVA to dissolve. The best printing temperature for your PVA support material does kind of depend on what brand you're using. In Matter Hacker's PVA case, you need about 200 degrees plus or minus 10. For Ultimaker PVA, it's about 215 plus or minus 10. And you want to be sure not to go too high because the PVA can cook in your nozzle and will make it more prone to clogging. So once you start creeping past those upper limits, you may need to find yourself unclogging the nozzle pretty regularly. Much like nylon, PVA will readily absorb water from the environment. So if you live in a humid place, make sure you store your PVA in a dry place. In the case of these two engine blocks, this one had the PVA dried beforehand, and this one was left sitting out for a couple weeks. If it does absorb water, that's not a problem. All you need to do is take your PVA spool, put it in the oven for a couple hours to draw out the moisture, and then after that be sure to store it in a Ziploc bag or something like that to keep it dry. In order to dissolve PVA, all you need is some sort of container and warm water. Best practice is to take water that is pretty hot but not too hot. Basically, if you wouldn't take a bath in it, don't put your print in it. So there you have it. Hopefully this will help you when you're printing with PVA. But as always, feel free to leave a comment down below or go to matterhackers.com if you have any questions. I'm Alec with Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.